Okay, hello everyone. My name is Gabriel Freitas, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience in the open source by integrating a project like RabbitMQ to Knative. And this is Path to UA How to Guide a RabbitMQ Story. Basically, for this talk, I want to learn a little bit what is Knative and why is the need for this integration with RabbitMQ. So I will explain the big picture of Knative and how to connect these pieces into your project. The process for bringing your integration to Knative. This talk is not going to be a deep dive on how to integrate a project to Knative, but it's going to be a summary and hopefully a useful roadmap for people that want to integrate or have thought about integrating something to Knative. So you can look at the steps that I had to follow with, by helping with the integration. I didn't start it from the beginning, so that's a lot of context that I had to learn and I have to ask, but hopefully this will avoid some of the mistakes that I personally made and made your life easier when getting an integration done with Knative. i also going to tell you how and who defines quality gates for GA and how to prioritize them, how to make your components available through the Knative release process and documentation, how to avoid common mistakes and strategies to solve them, and how to gather qualitative and quantitative feedback from metrics and users. So let's get started. First of all, if you are going to integrate something to Knative, it's worth knowing what is Knative for. So to answer this question, you have to go a little bit back in the time and why is Kubernetes something that we use today? So Kubernetes was aiming to solve up an issue with past time apps that they were hard to develop. Distributed systems have been hard all along the time. So with Kubernetes, you look to put an abstraction layer on top of building distributed systems so you could manage less complexity than to manually manage like containers life cycles, containers crashers, errors, and all of the changes that you have to do on a, on a distributed system. Kubernetes gives you an opinionated way of doing this. You have to do it by YAML, you have to do the Kubernetes API, but it's a light opinionated uh, framework to, to do this because you can extend the framework, you can uh, use tools that you use on your past project that are integrated with the Kubernetes ecosystem. So it has to be opinionated but because it has to give you a way to do this uh, simply and, and more easy than it was before. But it lets you extend a lot of things like logs, metrics, and all of this stuff that are normal in the, in the distributed system world. On top of this, Kubernetes, it's still hard. You can end up with YAML forests, a lot of YAMLs, a lot of configuration. The project could be uh, complex and complex even when using Kubernetes. So Knative is, again, an abstraction layer that offers you some building blocks or some tools to make your system a little bit easy in the Kubernetes world. So it is opinionated. Yes, it is opinionated. But again, it tells you you have to use this, but you can extend it using custom resources. You can use this existing integration, like the one that I'm going to explain today. So let's explain the Knative pieces and how they managed to get uh, a pretty, a fairly big picture of the cloud, cloud native state into the pieces that they separated. Knative divides in some pieces. Knative serving that offers you a building block to manage your workflows, serverless workflows in the cloud. Knative eventing. Knative eventing lets you give you the building blocks to build your event-driven architecture using the Knative, uh, Knative way. That is brokers, triggers, channel subscriptions. We will talk about that later. Knative function. It's again another abstraction layer that you hide from the user functions. Reduce the complexity that serving and eventing have because this is hard. System can get a lot of complex, um, can get complex and complex uh, from time to time. So functions is aiming for simplify even the Knative way. And Knative build that was uh, Tecton was uh, evolved, evolved part of Knative build. Like you have the CI CD system that is independent for any cloud provider. So Knative is open source at the end of the day. So it has its pros and it cons. And the community is driven where it's heading. The function is a clear example of that. Function didn't exist like a year before now, and it was driven by Lance, Mauricio, and I will talk a little bit about it because it's a, definitely a successful case of how to drive, so, drive something on the OSS world. So, Kennedy has a lot of pros and cons, as I said. One 
that you can see as any of them is community-driven adoption and development is key. Communication and consensus is necessary. We are a big community. We are looking to thrive and to get bigger and bigger. So you cannot pull the project to a direction that you want. You have to communicate your ideas and look for people that are, are wanting to support and help you uh, by implementing them. OSS, OSS is fun but hard. Open source is fun because you get to know people from different companies. You get to know a lot of brilliant people that it's going to help you that in other way, working just for your enterprise, you are not going to, to get that opportunity. But these people is also rotating. They get tired of the project. They get uh, involved in other projects. So the hard part is to being able to uh, get in the, in the role of the people that left and keep going with the community as you, as you do that. Knative is big and complex, use the docs and ask the community. Knative is by no means a small project. It has a lot of moving parts and it's always evolving. So docs and community is going to be the key for you to start understanding the project and use the working groups to align and get the right context. Knative have these working group concepts where people join groups to work in a specific area of Knative. It's impossible for one people to maintain the whole Knative ecosystem. So the best way to start at least is joining the working group that you are more interest to, interested in. So if you are interested in eventing and serving, they have their own working groups. Uh, the function teams just uh, got his own working group. So you are seeing how to start to get involved and driving uh, the creation of your part of the project in the community. So now that we know what is Knative, what it is for and how to start your, your journey in the open source, then where to start when you want to drive your integration or even uh, start your implementation from scratch in the Knative world. Basically, it's all about the spec or the type. Uh, the specification dictates what your implementation has to conform to or what your impl implementation has to uh, look like for other people to see. Basically, in Knative, I'm going to focus on Knative eventing in this talk because RavenQ was integrated as a messaging protocol uh, behind the Knative eventing implementation. So the specification is a, a basically a document that tells you as a developer what your integration should have to, for you to implement basically. And for a user perspective, this document tells you, okay, this is what you have to expect when using that implementation in your project. So Knative eventing has detailed specs on brokers, triggers, and all of these custom resources that it defines. Uh, Serving also have them, but let's uh, move them aside for now in the, for this presentation. Also, there are parts of the code that don't have specs that uh, they are, you're not going to define everything in a project as a spec. So if you don't see an spec and you want to implement something that is missing or something that maybe is not functioning like the flagged example that one of the folks uh, uh, tell those, told us in, the, in one past talk, then you have to look at the type. The type is going to tell you, okay, your object should look like this, should implement these methods. This is a way that you, that you should start your implementation at least and maybe change it in the way. That's something that you just have to start doing it and then you will, you will know if you're in the right path. And sometimes it just does not exist on Knative eventing, so in Knative in general. So if it does not exist, go for it, write your specs and write your own types for you to start implementing your, your integration. Now that we know how to start, let's go to integration. You must have a reason behind your integration with Knative. This way a working group can stand behind your integration. Always communicate what you are doing in Knative. You can think that you have the new great idea for Knative, but maybe a seasoned maintainer is going to tell you, okay, this can be done in another way. This is already something that we discussed with them once. So communicate so a working group can stand behind you or even create a new one as a function example. Understand the pieces involved, not, not the whole picture, just what you need. Basically, when you're going to start your implementation, there's a lot of things to look. Uh, in RabbitMQ, we just have to look at eventing, but even then, we didn't look at the whole picture of eventing. Basically, we ignored the implementation of channel subscriptions 
in favor of a, of a higher level uh, abstractions that were broker triggering sources. So basically, Event in RabbitMQ does not have yet uh, channel subscriptions because we wanted to offer the, the users that we had in mind the filters and the capabilities that the broker and triggering sources were already covering. So in that way, we, we went to an initial state to a GA state more uh, quicker than, than it was implementing channels and subscriptions. Basically, now that you have your picture, you know where to implement it and what to implement, you need to create a sandbox triple. Sandbox is a part of Knative that gives you uh, the tools to create a repo that is not yet in the Knative core, um, core repo. So everyone in the community can start seeing your code and checking out what you're doing and start contributing if they are interested. So this is a great way to start uh, implementing. A lot of things are covered in the readme, so I'm not going to go into details, but this is like the roadmap that you have to uh, follow to get your implementation going and the community to start talking about it. So after you create your sandbox repo, you're going to start with the testing. How do you tell also, uh, another software engineer that your project works and not just by, by your words is by telling, okay, I have test all of these, all of this code and the bar is high, it's all, always passing. So there are three types of, of tests that I found that they were key on the Knative uh, environment. One of them are unit tests, the usual unit tests that you do your code, E2E test. These are ways to, uh, to test uh, scenarios, real scenarios by mocking all the dependencies, but Knative have a lot of resources on how to write E2E tests in different, in, in Git, based on GitHub Actions using different cloud providers or, or um, cloud environments. And finally, the conformance tests. Uh, if you remember, I told you about the specification or specs. Conformance tests are the way to tell uh, Knative that your conformance, your specification is being respected by your implementation. So basically, if you have a specification of a broker that you have a function that you have to implement, and if the function needs to return something greater than zero, or and it's correct, or less than zero to, to be incorrect. Basically, a conformance test to test this is, okay, I have this function, my function is returning greater than zero, your conformance is passing. In the other case, you are not respecting the specification of that uh, specific implementation. And this is what lead, lead us to the whole picture. Basically, this is a pipeline or multiple pipelines of the Knative eventing side where you can see where all of this is getting in the, in the picture. You see here that downstream tests is something that I haven't explained, but basically Knative is an upstream, uh, upstream repo or upstream uh, ecosystem, basically. So Knative is the repo that other repos that are the integrations or other external repos depends on. Downstream tests are the ones that based on the unit test, the E2E and the conformance test, are going to tell Knative, okay, something is changing in the, in the upstream, our repo is breaking, now you have to tell us what to do because the ecosystem is kind of breaking up. So this is a way of automatizing uh, the whole environment for everyone to know, like when it's a new release, there are new changes, your project is still stable, stable or your project needs to, to adapt to the new changes. This is something that is maybe it's not for the, the normal project. You don't have to have an ecosystem to, in, to start your integration and all that, but having this is key for an ecosystem to be stable and to be useful around multiple, multiple integrations. Now let's go, now that we know a little bit how are things handled by Knative and where are we in, the, in our cycle to integrate something with Knative, let's see event in RabbitMQ example. Basically, what we wanted to do is to integrate RabbitMQ, that is a messaging multi-protocol messaging system, uh, to eventing because eventing on, underneath uses messaging protocol to, to make sure that the events are getting from, one po from the sources to the things. So we started going over the Knative repo maturity levels. We have clear that we have an initial state of projects and a stable state of projects and usable state of projects. Our GA was our goal to make the project usable for, for new users. So 
we started defining what we needed to implement. As I already told you, uh, event in half channels, subscriptions, uh, source brokers and triggers, and also flows. So we basically ignored the, the channels and the subscriptions and went for the broker trigger and source abstraction that went, went, were higher level for our use case. I start documenting, we started documenting as soon as we were implementing this, but it was not enough. Then we realized that, okay, documentation is key, but we are not getting the right kind of documentation for our users. So we started building POCs, demos, starting uh, getting RabbitMQ to the Knative Dev Docs, uh, talks, blogs. And at this point, we started to get users to use them and to give us feed feedback. And that was key. With the user feedback, we documented even more. And at that point, we were happy on how the things were going with RabbitMQ, but we were not quite ready for declare GA for RabbitMQ. We declare usable when we integrate the repo into the release project. Basically, it's adding your repo to, the, to a YAML, having a way to release your repo in a GitHub action, and integrating the tests um, with the Knative release process. At this point, this was our architecture. Basically, we have the broker and trigger that are the ones that receives uh, cloud events and forwards them to a sync, and we have a source. A source receives a RabbitMQ message and forward it as a cloud event. This is important because this is the only way that you have to forward events in the RabbitMQ architecture. Of course not, but this is the one that made more sense for us to integrate with Knative. And the beautiful thing with Knative eventing is that you, you can use this as a RabbitMQ broker, but if you change that type and just use a Kafka broker implementation, it's going to look different, but for the user, it's going to be the same experience. You're going to get, if you're using broker trigger, you're going to get a cloud event and forward it to a sync. And if you use a source, you're going to get that Kafka, um, Kafka message or Kafka uh, payload, and you're going to forward it as a cloud event. So it hides everything for the user. This was our responsibility as, as RabbitMQ experts to define this architecture. The orange bits are the one that are managed by RabbitMQ, so this is not a problem in Knative. This has the, the wrong way of uh, handling errors and handling the messages. And the green bits are the one that we had to implement in Knative. The, basically, uh, all of these, receipt of adapter, dispatcher, the DLQ dispatcher, consumers, and all of that. So I will talk a little bit about them in the next slide. One of the things that we had to do was defining quality gates. If you remember, recall, if you recall what I just said, this is usable. This is not yet GA. GA means general availability for the user to use your project. So we needed to have these quality gates that we need to, to achieve for users to start trusting our product for, for them to integrate in the project. So what is a quality gate? It's basically that a milestone that you need to reach to get your project into a usable state. So at this point, we were implementing things as they were as they were coming. If a user told us like, okay, we need a thousand messages per second, we implemented. Uh, this is failing when I do this and this, we were like fixing, fixing that. But we didn't have a concrete set of goals that led our implementation. So when we defined the quality gates was a, really a game changer for us. The first quality gate was we need to achieve the 1,000 messages per second. Second one was we need to maintain the uh, at least once delivery guarantee. And we I'm saving two for the end or one for the end that was a user of us told us, okay, we need this. And we saw that, okay, this need to be uh, ready for DA because in other case, we're not ready yet. Focus on the essentials, setting concrete goals, let you focus on the essentials and error scenarios are also scenarios. We were, as you saw in the, in the past slide, a lot of things were green. A lot of things were our own work to integrate with Knative. And these things did not have any error recovery system. So you have to be careful on how you do the retries, how you handle when your one part of your system is failing, because that is key on an event-driven system for it to be useful in other projects. And basically, user issues are critical. I told you that set concrete goals and focus on the essential is also critical, but always a user that is using the project is the 
in open source at least, is the case on keystone of your of your implementation. So when users start telling us that okay, this is failing, we need TLS, uh, we need MTLS also in our implementation, that modified our concrete goals that we have from day one, but it was all worth it because at the end we have already a usable system with all of these points that we maybe missed because when you're implementing, you have your own context of what you're doing, but when someone starts using it from the, from the outside, this is going to change the way you see, you see your project. So basically, when you set your goals, now you need to gather valuable metrics that allow you to, to measure, okay, I'm, I'm getting into those goals. How do you set those, quality, those valuable metrics? You have to have in mind that not every quantitative piece of data is a valuable metric. We have a lot of data available to us thanks to the RabbitMQ implementation, but some of them were not key for our GA announcement. Like, for example, how many bytes uh, are we writing per second and are getting forward by the RabbitMQ system? That was something that if we follow that metric, we will be in the wrong path and this will uh, probably will take us three or four months more than it, it took us. So you need to read exactly what you need and you need to integrate that into your uh, development process pro or cycle for you to get a an, an successful project. So Knative provi provides a good set of metrics to consider and start there. Basically, if Knative is measuring that, probably all of the projects integrating with Knative is measuring, are measuring them. So there's some good clues of how and, or what metrics you have to use to start an integration with Knative. Also use your quality gates, the one that I explained before, as a guide for your metrics. We wanted to reach a um, thousand messages per second. That's a point where you can start thinking, okay, if I need to get to that goal, I need to measure something that is relevant for that goal. And that gives us the clue to set two or three more measurements that we had in the, in the metrics. Have a clear goal when benchmarking, basically our, our benchmarks are adapted with things that we can measure and show that to the users, okay, this is working, this was what we promised, and in every release we run the benchmarks and update the images for the users to know we are still getting into that goal or we surpass it for them to be sure, like, okay, this is key, I want to use RabbitMQ because they have uh, this X throughput and they are maintaining each release. So it's important for the user to see and to be attracted to your product like, okay, this is your benchmarks and these are the guarantees that I'm offering to you. And also log certain metrics. We were logging a lot of stuff and we were thinking at some point that, okay, this could be used like a metric, but no, logs is an event that is happening on your, on your system and a metric is like a snapshot of your system in a certain uh, instance. So be careful to, go, to uh, take one as, an, as the other because at the end, we realized that logs were uh, throwing us off in the wrong path. So after that, avoid common mistakes. Basically all of them is a list that is worth uh, repeating of things that go, that went wrong in the integration with RadioMQ, but also where a lot, uh, like we learned a lot about each one of them. I hope that leaving this here, uh, can avoid this pain point for any other future integrations. So don't start implementing before talking about your idea. Uh, focus when in doubt, use the community and other channels. Go one step at a time. Don't buy more than you get you. When you are going to implement something, go right into that, that path. You don't have to learn the whole project to implement something in eventing on function and serving. Learn to prioritize about focusing on more important stuff and roadmaps and goals can be more important than the implementation. Uh, hopefully this talk gets you a little bit excited or uh, change your mind about integrating some, th some stuff with Knative and I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions. Russell. Yeah.